The following podcast is brought to you by the Station of the Cross. Thank you for listening. What are some of the highlights at the bishops meeting in Baltimore? Well, uh, I don't know if you can call them highlights. Maybe they're more like low lights. Boys doing things that boys have always done. Drawing a picture of a weapon can now get you in trouble. We've got to treasure silence as the first language of God. I agree with St. Paul that even the pagans can know the truth. I wonder sometimes whether or not the postmoderns can know the truth. Praise be Jesus Christ. This is Father Robert McTagg of the Society of Jesus, your daily host for the Catholic Current, where we plug into the power of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church. You're listening to us on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network and the iCatholic Radio app, where we proclaim the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. As always, let's start with prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, through the intercession of St. Ignatius Loyola, we ask that you pour forth your Holy Spirit upon us, a spirit of discernment, that we might hear your voice and obey your command. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, we're still in the first week of the new year, 2019. People are still a bit hopeful. They're making resolutions. This time it's going to be different. This time it's going to be better. What about our lives as Catholics? Specifically, what about our lives as Catholics who are people marked for and by and with worship? How can we be a worshipful prayerful people walking with the entire body of Christ throughout the year and not just for 45 minutes on Sunday. We're addressing the question how to live as a Catholic throughout the year. Our guest is a well-known author. She's also a wife and mother of nine children. She writes the award-winning Catholic Morning Mommy blog called Catholic All Year, and she's a regular contributor to Blessed Is She Ministries and is the voice of liturgical living at Endow Ministries. And she is the author of the book called The Catholic All Year Compendium, Liturgical Living for Real Life. Kendra Tierney, welcome to The Catholic Current. Thank you so much, Father. It's great to be here. Uh, Kendra, as I, I was going through through this book, and it really uh, walks you through the months and saints' days and liturgical seasons, and I'm thinking of, of giving this uh, as, as a gift to friends, and part of me is anxious that they might say, oh good, more homework for a father, just another thing for a busy Catholic person to add to their to-do list. I think there's more to it than that. How, how can you help us to take up the book and, and open it up? Well, what's worked for us is to try to do things that we were already going to do, things that we were doing anyway, like having dinner. And just with a little bit of preparation, I can have those things that we were already going to do reflect the church year and become this catechism, this you know lesson and also celebration uh, that, that doesn't actually add more to my plate. Um, you know, my kids want to eat dinner every night. So if if I am just a little mindful ahead of time with the liturgical calendar, then I can make that a little bit more meaningful. We we so, try to say our prayers every day, no matter what. And if I know whose feast day it is, then we can just reflect that in our prayers for the day. So we're not talking about about padding the to do list, but to take the, start with daily duties that are already on the list and treat them as as opportunities rather than than things that are in the way. I remember having a a friend lamenting to me that she couldn't make these hour-long meditations the way that she used to, and I said, well, maybe it's because you've got three kids in diapers and, you know, you're you're not at a Carmelite monastery, and maybe the best you can do is pray when you're in the bathroom. I I think the point is this, is that busy people are going to uh, starve to death spiritually if they don't incorporate reliable spiritual practices in our uh, in our daily lives and the church offers us this treasure chest of the liturgical year what's in the treasure chest in your experience well there there are so many things it's the examples of the saints that come around again and again, and how different they are. And I think it's such a good thing for 
for kids and adults both to be aware of, once you start to get to know these different saints on the, on the liturgical calendar, there's just no way that you can say that... Um, And I think our engineer needs to reconnect with our guest, Kendra Tierney. I'm going to continue until we get Kendra back. At the the bottom of the title for Kendra's book, she talks about liturgical living for real life. And I always keep my guard up a little bit when I hear things like real life. It reminds me of when I was in the classroom and... um, A student, usually 18 years old and full of the wisdom of his years, points out the window from the classroom and refers to what's outside of the window as the real world. And I would say, no, 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 what's out there, what's outside of our classroom, that's the realm of common experience. The real world is what we are doing here in the classroom, talking about truth and beauty and goodness and virtue. And the privileged place to meet reality is within the life of the church, specifically the place where the body of Christ worships the Father, where we avail ourselves of the wisdom and the treasures of the church granted by God to the one church he founded, accumulated lovingly by the saints across the centuries. And we make that available. Kendra, we have you back. Thank, thank you very much. I was doing a, a little yes. gloss on the last part of you, the title of your book. You talked about liturgical living for real life. What did you mean by real life in this context? Yeah, I just mean that it's easy to look at our faith as something, you know, the, uh, these faith traditions as something that happened in another time when, li- when people's lives were different. And I, I just think that every era has its own challenges. Our era has its own challenges. But that doesn't mean that we can't uh, use and appreciate these ancient traditions, these ways of praying, these ways of being inspired by the, by the saints and the events of the history of the church, that we can apply them to our own lives, even uh you know, even in our modern life, the way that our life is now, there's still room in in there for for church tradition. Well, you know, I, I'm I'm thinking, you know, there were people who say, well, you know, there was a time when things were simpler, and the only thing people had to do was work on a farm. And these statements are usually made by people who've never worked on a farm. And you know, I've I've worked with monastic communities, and they have their own rhythm and, and their own way of proceeding, but. The most common forms of Christian life, in the life of the home, of the family, with school and soccer practice, etc., etc., I think we're at risk if we don't imbue those daily moments and those daily routines with spiritual meaning that can be gleaned from the liturgical year. What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I think that if we try to wait until things settle down, until it's the right time to start this, it's just never going to happen. And I, I'm sure that's true for everyone. I know for a fact that it's true for moms of young children. And, and, and instead of waiting for the right time, waiting for things to settle down, to just embrace that this is what my life is now and find ways, find creative ways to, to work prayer and, and the rhythm of the church year into our lives. So if, you spend a lot of time in the car, then you can, you know, use that as your time to interact with your kids and talk about the saints and um, have particular prayers that you say when you go past the cemetery or when you go past the church, things like that, that, that embrace the way that your particular life is. Yeah, I think having kids strapped into car seats gives you uh, something of a captive audience. And uh, rather than having them getting lost in their individual screens or DVD players, I think there's a way of of teaching them and letting them know that as a Catholic, there is something happening every day. And Catholic life isn't just a window that opens and closes on Sundays. Absolutely. And and I think that that the kids in the, you know, captive audience thing is so important. Uh, And that's that's actually how our family started doing a family rosary is that we we just 
decided any time we were going to be in the car for longer than 15 minutes, we were going to say a rosary together. And What a great idea. You know, yeah, it just, we don't have anything else we could be doing. There's nothing better you could be doing. And, and so now my kids are really used to it. They, um, they know that we're not going to, you know, do anything else until we get the rosary done. So they, uh, they, you know, they remind us that it's time. Okay, as my father used to say, where, where, where there is no choice, there is no problem. What's the age range of your kids right now? Uh, one to sixteen. Okay, that's that's a that's a pretty broad range, and I, I think you and your husband have probably earned your stripes in terms of what works and what doesn't work with families. Yeah, you know we we have been we've been doing it a while, and it's it is interesting to be. At, you know, at this end of having, I've got three teenagers now and my oldest is looking at college applications and things. It's, uh, I still, we still have so many little kids that I still feel like I'm definitely still in that part, but we're going to start losing people off the top pretty soon. And it sounds like you have a, you have a very uh, deep bench uh, as well. You have nine children, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Uh We're going to continue our conversation with Kendra Tierney when we come back about how to live liturgically as a faithful Catholic throughout the year. And we want you to be part of the conversation. Get on the line now, 1-877-511-5483. Text us the same number, 1-877-511-5483. We're going to talk about how families can get started with simple building block practices. After the show, you want to share this with your friends. Direct them to the station of the cross.com to download the audio as podcast, or they can go to most major platforms, including iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Station of the Cross invites you to join us each day for the Liturgy of the Hours at 5 a.m., 3 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. Eastern. The Liturgy of the Hours is the daily prayer of the Church and is made up of readings from sacred scripture, writings from saints and theologians, and small reflections. For details about each hour and more information about the Liturgy of the Hours, visit thestationofthecross.com. We hope you'll join us for this daily prayer of the Church each day at 5 a.m., 3 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on The Station of the Cross. If you're new to iCatholic Radio, welcome to the free mobile app of the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network. It's available for download to your Android and Apple mobile devices. If you have any questions about your new app, please contact us at thestationofthecross.com or 1-877-888-6279. That's thestationofthecross.com or 1-877-888-6279. Through your new app, you can listen to podcasts of shows, conference talks, and prayers. View our programming grid, call us directly, and check out our mobile website. You can even learn how you can promote iCatholic Radio in your community, connect with us through social media, and financially support the programming you love. That's all available on your iCatholic Radio mobile app. Thank you for joining our iCatholic Radio family, proclaiming the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. The Station of the Cross offers online tutorials to help you get the most out of your iCatholic Radio app. You'll be introduced to our latest features and the opportunities available for not only listening to our live stream, but also to a variety of podcasts of our shows, prayers, and special presentations. For these tutorials and more, click on the iCatholic Radio link located on the station's page of our website, thestationofthecross.com. You're listening to the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network. Call in to the Catholic Current this hour at 1-877-511-5483. Each morning, the Catholic Current sends out a short survey on the topic for today's show so that you can share your thoughts and any questions you might have. This is a great way to participate, especially if you aren't able to call in live. A few of the responses will be read over the air to add to the discussion. So make sure you sign up to receive our emailed survey at thestationofthecross.com. 
Praise be Jesus Christ. This is Father Robert McKay of the Society of Jesus, your daily host for the Catholic Current, where we plug into the power of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church. You're listening to us on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network and the iCatholic Radio app, where we proclaim the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. We're talking about living faithfully as a Catholic throughout the year, a good topic to, to discuss in the first week of January, I'd say. And our guest is author and blogger Kendra Tierney. We're discussing her book, The Catholic All-Year Compendium, Liturgical Living for Real Life. If you just joined us, you should know that we began the hour talking about how to live together, especially as a family, throughout the liturgical seasons. In this segment, we're going to talk about putting building blocks in place so that you could develop good habits as a family to live as faithful Catholics throughout the year and not miss out on any of the precious opportunities our Catholic calendar gives us. Kendra, you talk about how each family member should have three particular personal holidays. What are they? Yeah, we call them the three special days, which, you know, especially as you get to have a bigger family like I do, you know, you want to make sure that people are singled out and get some individual attention. But even when we just had a few kids, uh, it was something that we really enjoyed. So we celebrate for each person in the family, birthday, your name day, and your baptism anniversary. So your name day being either the saint with whom you share a name or just a, a, a chosen patron saint. If, like me, your uh, name does not uh, yet is, is not yet a, have a feast day or an officially canonized saint. Well, you know, uh, the, the idea of a name day brings me back to childhood memories. My my mother was known as Susan, but her Italian name was Assunta, the Assumption, for the Solemnity of Our Lady of the Assumption, August 15th. And she would make a big point of the fact that, there, you know, in when her family was growing up in, in Italy, your your name day, your saint's day, was even a bigger event than your birthday. And she would lament that only her cousin Sylvia in Staten Island sent her a name day card for her birth for, on her on her name day. And so I I don't think Hallmark makes uh, name day cards. What kind of things do you do to to prepare for name day, and how is that celebrated? So we, for for the three special days in, in our family, the special person gets to pick what we have for dinner. And okay. if I think about it far enough in advance, they can pick whatever I can get at the grocery store. If I think of it that morning, then they just get to pick from whatever I have in the house. <laughs> and we, <laughs> um, we do a dessert for them on their feast day, and they get to choose that. And then over dinner, they... And their saint or the, or the day of their um, baptism is the uh, topic of conversation over dinner. So we'll talk about how and why we chose their name, or we'll talk about who their godparents are and what happened on the day of their baptism. Uh, on baptism days, we also uh, find their baptism candle, or if I can't find it, just any candle, and we right. renew our baptismal promises all together. Oh, what a beautiful practice! That's a that's a very you know. I, yeah, it's really great. I and had the privilege actually, of there's an indulgence for it. It's, <laughs> it's oh, is that right? Recommended. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh, how lovely! How lovely! Well, you know, I I baptized both of my sisters' girls, uh, and so I could certainly have stories to tell. And most people wouldn't have the priest who was there able to tell the story. So uh, <laughs> I, I look forward uh, to, to that a, as well. Um, I'm visiting with my family right now, and we've recently taken down most of the Christmas decorations. But the the sense of Christmas is still fresh in our mind. What was Christmas like? for you at your house? Well, we uh, make a point to keep our Christmas decorations up through Epiphany, and mm -hmm. we keep our nativity sets up all the way through Candlemas on February 2nd, which is sort of a, a, a traditional practice that I learned about looking, you know, looking into doing the research for, for the book. I learned so many things. Um, but, but yeah, we try to keep the, our celebration of Christmas going for the whole 12 days because we really make a point of during Advent not celebrating Christmas yet. So we wait and right. we don't put our tree up until Christmas Eve. Oh, so lovely. it feels new and exciting. Uh, and right. then we keep it up through the, through the 12 days. We, uh, as I was saying, you know, we always have, we have desserts on the three special days for the family members. We 
make a point to not have desserts on days that we aren't celebrating feast days just so that that really makes it feel special. The the kids are very, uh, uh, they, they always think that treats make something special. So we try to not make every day feel special. We save those for, for feast days. And so we have treats every day of the 12 days of Christmas. We wait and oh, watch our good. Christmas movies after Christmas, which is very Okay, there's a good idea. All the TV stations. All the TV stations show them before, but we wait and uh, and we watch uh, we watch all of our Christmas movies for the twelve days after Christmas. I, I've actually my the reason my kids are quiet right now is because they're watching Frosty the Snowman. <sighs> so it sounds like Christmas is really Christmas at your house. Does that mean that Advent is really Advent at your house? It is. Yes. Yeah. We really make a point of it being a season of waiting which is really hard and it's really countercultural and it took a few years of trying to wrap my head around it uh, to really make it happen in our family. But now, now my kids are used to it. It's just part of our family culture. Well, you know, when, when my sister had kids, I, I decided to introduce my nieces to Advent calendars, which I think is a very lovely practice. And it took a quite a bit of doing to find an Advent calendar that was not made of Legos and did not include Star Wars figures. And, and my, my little nieces were very happy to get something that was more religiously themed. And then someone let the cat out of the bag that there's another custom that involves having chocolate every day. And I figured that my sister would snap my neck like a twig if I was feeding chocolate to their kids every day. So um, I've I've tried to find serious Advent calendars. Uh, do you keep an Advent calendar d- during the year, um, during Advent season in your family? We do. We do keep an Advent calendar. And the, the chocolate ones were not a success for for us because <laughs> I like to find an Advent calendar that builds to something because that's what right. Advent is, right? It's, it's that building towards the incarnation, which is such an amazing moment in time that happens on right. one particular day. And so right. a chocolate Advent calendar, when you reach the end of Advent, all you have is a piece of trash and a hankering for chocolate every morning. Right. So I like the yeah. Advent calendars where you can take something out each day and build towards it or, you know, color in one little part of the picture every day. And then at the, at the end, you have the whole picture colored in or add a sticker or we've got one where it's a, um, a like a quilted Christmas tree that, mm-hmm. uh, that you add a little ornament to each day. And, and at the end of Advent, it's all filled in and looks like a Christmas tree. Oh, very good. And I know with, with little kids, you can't go wrong if you have stickers. That That's always a, a very positive thing. Like How about the Advent blessing of the home and the marking of the doorway? Because, you know, Epiphany is this Sunday, and it used to be a time, as, especially in Europe, where Epiphany was a bigger feast day than, than Christmas in terms of celebrations and customs. Are, are you going to do an Advent blessing and a blessing of the doors? The Epiphany blessing, yeah, the Epiphany home blessing, yes. We, yes. Um, we have been fortunate enough to have uh, a priest come and bless our home when we moved into it, but we like to do the yearly upkeep blessing of, of our home every year on Epiphany. Um, we bring a piece of chalk with us to Mass. Uh, some uh, There was one parish we went to where they handed it out, but if they don't, we I just put a piece of chalk in my purse and bring it to Mass and ask Father to bless it for us. And then we, we uh, you know, write the... Um, a little inscription above the door, and and do the Advent, the yeah, excuse me, Epiphany house blessing prayers. It's a really fun tradition. Well, you know, I want to uh, give a shout out to my brother priests and 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 uh, my my friends who who are deacons. Uh, if you go online, there's some beautiful blessings for the blessing of not only the chalk for the marking of the doors, but there's also a, a special blessing for epiphany water, for holy water. So if you've just moved into a residence, you should certainly have it blessed. And this is good spiritual hygiene to uh, to renew that blessing uh, every year. And you write the, the year, uh, the, the particular calendar year with cross in the center and the letters uh, CMB, which could stand for the three wise men by tradition, Caspar, Malthasar, and, uh, excuse me, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthasar. And then there's a Latin phrase, which has just slipped out my left ear at the moment, but I believe it means Christ blesses this. Christum Benedictus, something like Christ bless the house. um, Christ Christ bless the house. And and I think that's that's a very, very fine custom. And uh, if you're trying to do Christmas on a budget and not have your children eaten alive by, by the world, 
Uh, some friends of mine came up with a brilliant tradition and said, hey, baby Jesus got three gifts at Christmas, and that's what you're getting too. And it just made Christmas a lot more manageable and, uh, and a lot less uh, manic uh, as well. And, and in those so-called, you know, that courtesy of the people gave us the high poetry of that season known as, as ordinary time, what, what are your daily practices uh, as a family? Does it include a daily rosary, for example? It does. We, uh, you know, we're not at a hundred percent, but we make we really make a strong effort to do a family rosary uh, daily. Whenever, like I said, whenever we're in the car, we do one. But we, our our goal is to do one, you know, um, in the living room together in the evening. Uh, and it, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful practice, and it has so much. Um, there's so many graces. I think that that come from spending that time together. And every time Mary has an apparition, it's all, it's all she asks of us, right? Please right. just say the right. rosary. Yeah, yeah, yes. And what's it like to get that started in a family and especially with young kids? Yeah. So I think that the key is to just, is to have appropriate expectations, whether, um, and for us, that means high expectations for little kids and for, excuse me, for big kids and just not worrying too much about what the little kids are doing. And so for our over school age kids, we do insist that they be able to sit quietly. You know, you pick a spot, you can sit anywhere you want, but then you have to stay in that spot and to speak up when they're saying the prayers, because the rosary is, you know, particularly intended to be something that's said in community. Um, right. And, uh, you know, so we all have to speak up and we all have to say it together um, and and to be respectful and not use, uh, you know, not use our rosaries as weapons, things like that. <laughs> um, but then for little kids, we don't mind if they sort of roll around on the floor or play quietly with the toy. If they're too little to... Uh, not be disruptive, then we just put them to bed. But um, but it's you know it's something that that really only takes fifteen or twenty minutes, and it's really not that painful once you get into the habit of it. Right, and and every good habit has to start somewhere, and it can be a little rough at first. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Kendra Tierney about living liturgically as a faithful Catholic throughout the year, and we're going to talk about the next big seasons around the corner or at least within sight, Lent and Easter, and we will want you to be part of the conversation. Get in the line now at one 511 5483 Text us at the same number, one 511 5483 After the program, go to the thestationofthecross.com, direct your friends there as well. Download, download the, podcast, the broadcast as a podcast, look at our resource list, or you can download our audio is podcast on most major platforms, including iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Tune in weekdays from 6 to 7 a.m. Eastern for Sermons for Everyday Living, a program that brings you real sermons from real priests on topics important to you and your faith. Visit thestationofthecross.com for details. Prayer of Deliverance. Almighty God and Father, we beg Thee through the intercession and help of the Archangels, St. Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel, for the deliverance of our brothers and sisters who are enslaved by the evil one from anxiety, sadness, and obsessions. We implore Thee, deliver us, O Lord. From hatred, fornication, and envy. We implore Thee, deliver us, O Lord. From thoughts of jealousy, rage, and death. We implore Thee, deliver us, O Lord. From every thought of suicide and abortion. We implore Thee, deliver us, O Lord. From every form of sinful sexuality. We implore Thee, deliver us, O Lord. From every division in our family and every harmful friendship. We implore Thee, deliver us, O Lord. From every sort of spell, malefice, witchcraft, and every form of the occult. We implore Thee, deliver us, O Lord. Thou who said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, grant that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary we may be liberated from every demonic influence and enjoy thy peace always. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Do you ever wonder where God is in your suffering or what his will is for you as you struggle in the faith? 
Each weekday from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern, the Station of the Cross brings you Heart to Heart with Mother Miriam, a program to inspire you and offer solutions to many of life's challenges. Mother Miriam is a Catholic nun whose humor and holiness, along with years of theological training, bless all who are in need of encouragement and practical advice. Listen on your local Station of the Cross affiliate or on our free iCatholic Radio mobile app. That's Heart to Heart with Mother Miriam, weekdays from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern on the Station of the Cross. You're listening to the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network. Call in to the Catholic Current this hour at 1-877-511-5483. If you miss any portion of today's show or want to listen to any past episodes, click the podcast link under the Programs tab at the top of our homepage, thestationofthecross.com. Praise be Jesus Christ. This is Father Robert McKaig of the Society of Jesus, your daily host for the Catholic Current, where we plug into the power of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church. You're listening to us on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network and the iCatholic Radio app, where we proclaim the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. We're talking about how to live faithfully as a Catholic, which is to say how to live liturgically as a Catholic throughout the year, a good topic for the start of the new calendar year. Our guest is a blogger and author, and her latest book is The Catholic All-Year Compendium, Liturgical Living for Real Life. If you're just joining us, you should know that we began the hour talking about the riches and treasures that the Catholic Church gives us through the calendar. Every day there is something that can help to make this day sacred. In the next segment, we looked at starting family practices. Start with everyday stuff, stuff you're going to do anyway. Start with meals, grace before meals. And we looked at giving every person in the family three special days. Birthdays, of course, uh, name day, which is either the feast of your patron saint or your favorite saint. And then also to celebrate the anniversary of baptism. And we also did a quick review of what can be done in Advent and and in Christmas. In this segment, we're going to take a look at the seasons that are over the horizon and that are intimately connected, Lent and Easter. Kendra, I'm, I'm reminded of a friend who is invited to, to do Midnight Mass at, the, um, at, a, at a monastery, and after Midnight Mass, the prioress, being a good prioress, ran up and said, Father, would you be available for the Easter Vigil as well in Holy Week? And he said, Mother, we just put baby Jesus in the manger. Let's not rush to put him in the tomb. But even so, w- with uh, <laughs> Christmas not quite over, um, experienced pastors say you can never be too prepared for Lent and Easter. Let's start with Lent. What does Lent look like in your house? Yeah, well, and I do think it's a good idea to to plan ahead, because it can take a long time to sort of wrap your head around some of this stuff, because it is so different from how a lot of the world around us is living. Um, but, and I know that for us, it took a few years of trying to establish our family Lent to really make it look the way that I was, that I was hoping it could. And, 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 and it really does, I think now. So we try to decorate the house for Lent a little bit, just so that we'll have a visual reminder of, uh, of that Lent is coming. So instead of a, uh, you know, instead of flowers by the front door, I, I put a cactus there. And instead of our usual centerpiece on the table, I put, you know, some rocks and just some great big nails that I just got at Home Depot as our um, as our centerpiece on the table so that just as we're walking through the house, we just get that visual reminder, hey, it's Lent. Um, and then we... Uh, we don't in in our house except on Sundays. We don't eat treats. We don't watch. Uh, we don't watch TV or play video games um, uh, throughout Lent, which is a big deal for kids. <laughs> but sure. we've really found that it, yeah, it really helps to uh, all of us to sort of detach from from those things for a short right. period of time that recurs again and again. But it just it helps you realize that you're not as dependent on those things as you might think. 
Right. It's 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 funny what you can learn to live without uh, if you have to, and I think it's easier if this is being done by your own choice rather than something that is uh, is imposed upon you as well. I was struck by what you said about you know changing the the decorations for the seasons, and it's obvious that you decorate the house, uh, you go all out for for Christmas, but it, it struck me about it, putting reminders out for Lent because that makes you stop and notice things, and I think so often. We're moving so fast, we're so distracted, we're so busy, we're in such sensory overload that we're not aware of the passage of time. You know, we wake up and it's Sunday morning and we blink and we wake up and it's Sunday morning again and we have no idea how we got there. Do you find that being mindful of the liturgical seasons helps you and your family to slow down? It really does, and and I, it gives us that time to focus on different aspects of our faith, especially that seasons of penance, seasons of waiting, seasons of joy, but even more specifically that each month has a, a particular devotion that we can focus on during the month, like, you know, October we focus on the rosary, and November we focus on the holy souls. So even though I'd love to focus my prayer on all of those really important things all year long, uh, I, the reality is I don't. And so it gives us those particular, um, those particular areas of focus. And, and Lent really is, is such a great time to identify things in my life that I want to try to improve, ways right. that I want to prove to myself that I can detach from things and to spend my time uh, the way that I know that would be better to spend it. And and it's that 40-day chunk where I don't have to say, all right, I'm changing. The, it's not like a New Year's resolution. All right, I'm going to do this for the whole year, or I'm just going to make this huge life change. I can say to myself, you know what, I'm going to try this for Lent. And if I'm better afterwards, then I'll keep it up. And if not, well, then I'll try something different. Well, it, it sounds like there has to be a willingness to accept trial and error in setting up a, a liturgical lifestyle for family. Has that been in your experience? Absolutely, absolutely. And and like I, so, in our own family, giving up TV was something that I really felt like I wanted to be able to do for Lent. And the first. Two years I tried it, it was just a disaster, and I ended up giving up on giving up on it. But we just kept trying, and eventually, you know, it's something that's really a challenge. You know, you think that this is something that is mostly going to be your kids giving up. But, Mm -hmm. you know, when you're a mom who has young kids, if your kids aren't watching TV, then they're in the kitchen with you. (laughs) Um, And so it really is a big sacrifice for for moms to take away that. Um, so I don't even necessarily recommend that moms of only little kids uh, attempt that unless you feel particularly called to it. But once mm-hmm. I had older kids too to help entertain the younger ones, I just really wanted to prove to myself and my kids that we didn't need this as a, as a daily crutch in our lives, that we could go right. through six days of the week for six weeks without that and play board games and talk with each other. Um, Make eye contact. And, but, but again, it's, it's, it's not everything's going to work and you have to, right. you have to use your own, you have to be aware of your own temperament and your particularly family, particular family circumstances. And if you're dealing with illnesses or food allergies or pregnancy or, um, you know, you have to account for those things, but right. but that doesn't mean you have to give up on the whole issue. Right. I I think there has to be a, a willingness to to stumble to learn from your mistakes, and I have some very dear friends whom I I, I love greatly, and and uh, I think that their inner perfectionist makes them afraid of, of trying and they let the best become the enemy of, of the good. You know, when I was teaching, I would tell my students, I said, Lent is a really good time to find out if anything other than God has power over you. It's a good time to find out if you give your loyalty to anything or anyone other than God. Uh, and 
it's it's a sword that can pierce hearts and, and reveal the thoughts of, of many, to borrow a scriptural phrase. All right, let's say we come out the other side of Lent and we're getting ready for Easter. What does that look like in your home? Uh, well, so there's there are a lot of great traditions for for Holy Week. Our Holy Week is is a really busy week for us, um, starting with Spy Wednesday. We have a family tradition of, uh, of I, I go and get 40 quarters from the bank, and we uh, hide I hide 40 quarters um, like the 40 pieces of silver that they gave to Judas and the kids. Uh, you know, you just let the kids loose to run around and find them and knock each other over trying to get to quarters. And then you get to have a family discussion about, you know, what that felt like and why we reacted that way and how, you know, money can be corrupting and, a, and can be a bad motivation. And uh, and then we decide as a family what, what we would like to do, you know, where we'd like to donate that money. Uh, and oh, that's, that, that sounds so like a, 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 a lovely tradition. practice. I think that's that's a very wise idea. Kendra, we just got a text from a listener who asks, uh, what does your guest think of using a devotional like Magnificat Mass Daily Reader? Do you have a, a daily help like that, something that people can subscribe to? Uh, I don't produce one personally, but we do. Uh, I, I, uh, I have a subscription to the Magnificat, and I think it's it's a great resource. And they have one for kids too. That's just for Sundays and holy days of obligation that that we use and and enjoy. Um, again, anything that that can be that reminder to to prayer and the Magnificat has great little um, you know devotions in there for the day plus the readings. Um, uh, I have a, a booklet of prayers that I put out for. The month that go along with the saints days that we celebrate so for instance you know in january there's a bunch of litanies like the litany of the holy name and right. the litany um, of our lady that we use that are really long but um but our uh, fun kids love the, that call and response prayer yes um, is, i mean that really pray, praying litanies uh in a community if it's done thoughtfully, can, can be very beautiful and very moving. And if you want a companion throughout the liturgical year, uh, my book on preaching is called I Have Someone to Tell You, a Jesuit Heralds the Gospel. And there are chapters with collections of homilies for each season, as, as well as some essays on, on preaching uh, a, as well. Um, Kendra, how about your, your parish? How can parish life supplement, complement, reinforce, and, and guide what you're trying to do in the home liturgically? Yeah, that, I think that that's a really good um, thing to be aware of because really the point of liturgical living is community. And I recommend to people that they start personally, that they start, you know, then broaden it to your family. But then the eventual goal is we want this in our parishes. We want this in our broader communities. We want celebrations for our um for the patron of our parish and our city, um, because these really are celebrations that are that that were meant to be observed in community. Things like fasting and feasting is is better when it's done together. And so processions, for example. Level, yes, exactly. Processions. You know, walking through the streets. Um, it, that's it's such a beautiful thing and. A Eucharistic procession is not something that one can uh, can do at home. That has to right. be, be that has to be parish based. Um, right. And there are there are really beautiful old traditions associated with lots of feast days that could be celebrated at the parish level and would be, I think, really inspirational for a lot of people who didn't grow up with these traditions. Well, you know, I, I had the good fortune of being part of some processions in, in Central America during during Holy Week, and it was it was profoundly moving and, and very very humbling to see the faith and the devotion of the people and a really bold public large statement of faith that I think Americans 
um, have lost contact with. And if you go to, if you belong to an older parish, go through your photographic archives. You're going to find very likely beautiful photographs of processions that might inspire you. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Kendra Tierney, Tierney author and blogger and mother of nine, about how to live faithfully throughout the Catholic year. We want you to be part of the conversation. Get on the line now, one 877 Text us at the same number, one 877 After the broadcast, you can download our audio at thestationofthecross.com or most major podcast platforms. When we come back, we're going to talk about the link between prayer, penance, fasting, and celebration. We want you to be part of this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is Father Jacek Mazur. Please join me in a prayer to St. John of Kenty. We ask you, St. John, to take us under your care. Obtain for us those indispensable gifts without which we would be unable to fulfill the tasks that God has given to us in his divine plan. Obtain for us from God that special favor which we so fervently desire, and above all, the remission of our sins, a continuation in his grace, and a happy death. Amen. Please pray with us this act of consecration of the human race to the sacred heart of Jesus. Most sweet Jesus, Redeemer of the human race, look down upon us humbly prostrate before thy altar. We are thine, and thine we wish to be. But to be more surely united with thee, behold, each one of us freely consecrates ourselves to thy most sacred heart. Many indeed have never known thee. Many too, despising thy precepts, have rejected thee. Have mercy on them all, most merciful Jesus, and draw them to thy sacred heart. Be thou king, O Lord, not only of the faithful who have never forsaken thee, but also of the prodigal children who have abandoned thee. Grant that they may quickly return to their father's house, lest they die of wretchedness and hunger. Be thou king of those who are deceived by erroneous opinions, or whom discord keeps aloof. Call them back to the harbor of truth and unity of faith, so that soon there may be but one flock and one shepherd. Be thou king of all those who are still involved in the darkness of idolatry or of false religions. Refuse not to draw them all into the light and kingdom of God. Turn thine eyes of mercy toward the children of that race, once thy chosen people. Of old they call down upon themselves the blood of the Savior. May it now descend upon them a laver of redemption and of life. Grant, O Lord, to thy church assurance of freedom and immunity from harm. Give peace and order to all nations, and make the earth resound from pole to pole with one cry. Praise to the divine heart that wrought our salvation. To it be glory and honor forever. Amen. You're listening to the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network. Call in to the Catholic Current this hour at 1-877-511-5483. Shortly after the show, visit our page for the Catholic Current at thestationofthecross.com. You'll find a link to today's episode page where you can view Father McTague's show resources and today's podcast. Praise be Jesus Christ. This is Father Robert McTague of the Society of Jesus, your daily host for the Catholic Current, where we plug into the power of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church. You're listening to us on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network and the iCatholic Radio app where we proclaim the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. It started the new calendar year, 2019, and it's a timely question to ask, how can we live as faithful Catholics throughout the year? The answer of the Church is through the Church's calendar of liturgical seasons. To guide us in this conversation, we've been chatting with author and blogger Kendra Tierney, discussing her latest book, The Catholic All-Year Compendium, Liturgical Living for Real Life. If you're just joining us, you should know that we began the show talking Talking about the treasures that uh, sadly a lot of people have lost contact with these days that are available for free uh, in the church's calendar. We went on to talk about starting family traditions, simple building blocks, celebrating not only birthdays, but saints' days, baptismal anniversaries. In the next segment, we talked about Lent and Easter. In this segment, we're going to talk about the curious link between prayer Uh, penance, fasting, and celebration. Now, Kendra, some people might say, well, all right, 
prayer can be nice and celebration is celebration that's attractive why do we have to ruin it in the middle why have the catholic buzzkill of penance and fasting i have an answer to that i'm wondering what yours is well i think that it's it's all trying to stay in balance that we we want to acknowledge both parts of our faith and that allowing room in our lives for for both joy and celebration and also for penance and particularly fasting is is a very traditional for thousands of years practice of Catholics and it has fallen out of favor you know over the last generation but it's really always been an important part of our of our Catholic faith this idea of using a a fast to prepare for the joy of a feast and to understand that what we do with our bodies affects how our you know affects our souls as well Right, because you know, we're we're not just uh, we're not angels temporarily borrowing a body. We're philosophy would say we're composite creatures. Our identity is this body and this soul together, and body and soul can be trained to help each other, or you can let the you can let the the, the body run wild. You know, we we were house sitting a dog not long ago. It was a beautiful dog, very very loving dog not really well trained so imagine having a toddler with four legs 80 pounds and big teeth running around the house not a lot of impulse control and the church in its wisdom has has uh, cycles and seasons and rhythms to remind us that we're body and soul together and also to remind us that there's meant to be a harmony between uh, body and soul and, you know I'm part Italian so so food has a sacramental quality to it small s uh, of course and sometimes that choice to say no and having your body rebel forces you to say wait a minute what why am I doing this what what is this for and if you're gonna fast with any regularity and any degree of intensity you're going to have to have a good answer uh, for that so let's say you know we talked uh, about Lent in the last segment in your experience what does Easter look like and feel like if you've been really faithful to your Lenten disciplines uh, previously including fasting yeah I, th- I think that that observing Lent the way that, that our family has for the past uh, I guess it's been 10 years now um, maybe 12 it, it, it's Easter feels so different. Like uh, it, it's this accomplishment and and joy. You know, the kids are counting down to to the day. They all want to go to the vigil mass so that they get Easter first um, before the little kids who are already in bed. Um, sure. And you know, it just feels like this this triumph that we get to share in with Jesus, that we weren't just passively waiting for the priest to tell us at Mass, all right, Lent's over, now it's Easter, that we've been, you know, walking that, you know, walking the way of the cross with Jesus as we are able, and 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 because we shared in his sorrow, we also get to share in his triumph, and it really, it really feels different, and um and it's been it's been a beautiful tradition for our, for our family. Well, you know, I'm I'm fond of saying if we only play at being sinners, we can only play at being saved. And and one of the ways to more set yourself up for a more life giving and enduring uh, set of blessings at Easter is to take Lent seriously. Kendra, I want to shift focus for just a, a moment because clearly you, you have a sense of the liturgical and, and the, the sacramental with the small s and not letting the world hijack holidays. What if you were going to give advice to someone planning a wedding? 
Because we, we know that there's okay. a major industry that, that turns us in, into, you know, princess for the day. And I've seen young mm-hmm. women who look like they're planning the Normandy invasion and spending enormous <laughs> amounts of money. And God and Christ are just left out and the church is just a backdrop and the priest says magic words. What would your advice be to someone planning a wedding? Well, I just, I think that the best advice I received was to remember that what that you're planning a marriage and not just a wedding, that a wedding is a day and a marriage is a lifetime. And, mm-hmm. and so, yes, you want, you want to celebrate that because we want, uh, you know, the, the bride and the groom and the families and our community to celebrate this together because it isn't just a man and a woman who are getting married. It's this bond is an important part of the, of, both families and yes. of the community at large, um, but but that can't be, of course, the focus of uh, the focus of the wedding has to be the marriage and not the party. Right, and and marriage is a sacrament of vocation just as much as holy orders is, and you're preparing mm-hmm. to have a particular type of witness and service to the church, and if you're not focusing on that, there's probably not going to be a happily ever after. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, going, if the priority is the dress or the cake or something and not, um, you know, and not really spending that time when you're engaged on talking about what do we want our family traditions to look like? What, um, how do we want to raise our kids? Um, you know, what, what is our, what are, are going to be the things that are important to us to during you know during our marriage and family life that's such an important thing to focus on during that that period of engagement and i know that it's easy to get swept away in the in the other stuff right and and to be caught up in in the illusion of of you know of being the disney princess uh, for, for the day and i i think that people who have the experience of having given themselves to christ throughout the liturgical year are going to be better prepared to give themselves to one another sacramentally throughout their married life uh, as well. I'm Absolutely. Father Robert McKay yeah. of the Society of Jesus, your daily host here in the Catholic Current. Kendra Tierney, thank you so much for being a, a lovely guest. We hope we can have you on the air again before long. Friends, stay with us Monday through Friday, 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern, The Catholic Current. Our guest on Monday is going to be Dr. Joseph Shaw of Oxford University. We will address the question, whatever happened to the lay vocation? We know you want to be part of that conversation. After the show, go to thestationofthecross.com to download the audio as a podcast. You can also find us on most major platforms, including Spotify, Uh, Stitcher and iTunes and we pray through the intercession of Our Lady of Mount Carmel that God our Lord will protect you from all harm and every evil in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit go in peace and please pray for me Thank you for listening to this podcast brought to you by the Station of the Cross. The Station of the Cross is a listener-funded, nonprofit organization. If this podcast has helped you in your spiritual journey, please consider making a donation. Donations can be made through our website, thestationofthecross.com, or by calling 1-877-888-6279. You can also donate right through our free iCatholic Radio mobile app. Thank you for listening to and supporting the Station of the Cross, proclaiming the fullness of truth with clarity and charity.